Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 163 of Trials and Trebuchets. I'm your dungeon master, Luke, and joining me are my players, whose names are... Hi, my name is Ben, and I play the level 8 gnome wizard, Windsor Wallaby, along with his cuddly little companion, Mr. Wiggles, who is still dead. There's no meow, he's dead. <laughs> Hello, I'm Carla, and I play the level 8 tiefling roguelock Integrity Adelberry, and welcome to Wild Cliff, where we give tours to murderous frogs, and at the end of our tour, we give you Snake Getty and an old giant snake carcass. <laughs> snake Getty. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, and I play Mira Marchand, the level 8 half-elf bard. Now autumn's time is gone, and winter's here. The gala masquerade and duel draw near. We near our victory, and dress divine. The gala of the first year's end is here. Let's win and shine. Oh, that's so good. Everybody we're, clap. We're wearing masks. Everybody clap. You listener at home, clap. Clap immediately. <laughs> no matter what you're doing, clap. Oh, if you're driving, don't clap. <laughs> oh no, no the shadow of your fell. Uh, hi, my name is Sam, and I play the level eight human sorceress, Sarah Epsenderman. Not only are we some of the most well-behaved students at Wildcliff, we are also very successful at business people. It's Fuck true, yeah. we are. It's Fuck. true. Yes. And my jokes got stolen, but last time on Trials and Trebuchets, what the joke? students took their toady guest loud on a brief tour of the campus, showing him the dormitories and the kitchen, as well as all the secret tunnels as and the sunken hatch. As Loud was becoming enraged at simple episode four level puzzles, Serenep and Integrity had a quiet orby standoff, staring at each other as the toad ate hearts and broke stone. The four students gave him assorted lich books of varying degrees of actual <laughs> telling him how to become undead or immortal or unmortal and let him eat Nesca's rib snakes, all while lying about the possession of orbs and getting out of this situation without a harmed hair on their head. They awoke the next wintry morning to masquerade parcels at their doorsteps for that evening's gala of frost's first chilling grasp and a nice party and duels. The end of the festival is here, folks. So, it is the morning yet. We pick up in the morning where we left off. You had all received a large parcel with a silvered mask in it, a masquerade mask, that which dips and covers the top of your face and the, like, front of your nose, leaving your nostrils kind of open so you can still breathe through your nose. There was questions about this. Covers the bridge. Specific, covers the bridge of your nose. Yes. Thank you, Ben, for the anatomy lesson. <laughs> You can, you can decorate it as however you'd wish, and you can describe that now, or you can wait until later when we're all describing our gala outfits. Nonetheless, we can just say you can spend this time in the morning decorating it. Yes? Yes. Yeah, I want to decorate some masks. Key. To present you with the itinerary for the day. It's morning. You have a free period. There is no duels until later this evening. Ah. You are to meet at roughly 4.30, if I recall properly, by the Enchantment Tower for your gala orientation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think as the, 4.45 as, mm, is when yes. we go to the champ's table. Yes, yes. This is all the same things. Thank you, Ben. You okay. took notes. Oh, I, my I did take a note, yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It only took 163 <gasps> episodes. <laughs> and included in that, which I think I neglected to mention last time as my head was on fire, you must bring your plus one with you. Oh. So you might do so throughout the day. If you've not acquired a plus one, uh, so be it. And you can just show up solo. Plus zero. Nonetheless, you spend the morning in your dormitories and have the afternoon to figure everything out before the gala. Eh, except for one of you who has a very, very big appointment uh, later this morning. I'm talking about you, Sarah, not then your parents showing up. Ooh. Gross. So I ask you all, what do we do? Um, 
Well, I would like to ask my girlfriend to go to the gala with me, is what I would like to do. Ah, wonderful, Sarah. Sorry. Wonderful, Mira. My Thank apologies. You. I've broken through the character wall. Mira she Marchand. Lives in my brain. <laughs> we gotta patch that back Mira up Mira Marchand, again. could you, for all of us, set the stage? Yeah. Who is here? What is happening? What do you need from me to make this a successful okay. uh, promposal? So I imagine that Elric has, you know, as per Mira's request, gathered some musical students to provide a very basic backing kind of uh, a musical uh, arrangement to be mm. played upon Delnus Raythrin's arrival. I think that uh, I think that Mira is, you know, how there's like those gates around like the necromancy building. I think yes. that she situated them around there, sort of, and they're kind of around it, almost like a <laughs> a place of fanciness, a place of grand arrival. I think that I mean, obviously, bearing in mind that Integrity did not do great on her animal handling check to oh. talk to the birds. I think that she's. They think the birds are probably here. I don't think that they are. Uh, as... Oh, the birds. Oh, don't. Let me tell you. Oh, Don't please. even worry about the oh, birds. The birds are taken care of. I oh, have fan- many plans fantastic. for birds. Fantastic. Don't yes. worry about the birds then. Um, yeah. I think that Mira has gotten like just like a crate that's like with like a little crow logo on it that she's found nearby and she's standing on top of it. And I imagine that she's gotten her friends to like bring Delness over probably with the whole thing of like, oh, gee, want to come over here, Delness? You you can't imagine why. Like everybody is very <laughs> much sort of playing along as though they don't know what this is going to be. Mm, excellent. Uh, Serenep Integrity Winsler. Uh, tell me what that sounds like, please. Do you want to take the scenic route grabbed... for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> There's no time for breakfast. We have to go get Delnus. <laughs> no, I'm saying that we get Delnus and we're like, that... hey, let's go have breakfast together, but let's take a scenic route today just ah, to be like the right. freshly like fallen snow. No let's go reason. look around. Like that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, Delnus. Can you believe that there was like this giant, giant rock that all of a sudden appeared like over there? And I really think that we should check there it out. There are so many it's different approaches to this i mean <laughs> there was there was like a loud boom and everything like it must have happened sometime during the night or like early this morning because i remember hearing it but i was still kind of groggy and i just fell right back to sleep but integrity is telling me all about that giant rock yeah sarah is like, nodding her head along she doesn't know how the plan changed so quickly boom as they arrive they'll see that yes. this sort of I guess spikes isn't the right word, but like the individual poles on like the fence surrounding mm. the department have all been lit up with fairy fire to sort of create Ooh. this beautiful glowing effect, especially in sort of the darkness of the cave in which they are all situated. And Mira is standing there. There's sort of the, the music playing in the background. I don't know what the birds are doing. That's fine. Yeah. To give Uh-oh. a description of the music <laughs> to, and to give you the specific details, Mira, uh, Professor Elric granted you four mm-hmm. upper year Fabulous. Musical application students. Mm-hmm. There is a heavy focus on pipes and flutes. <laughs> Love it. As well as a banjo. Oh, Fucking gotta my have God. the banjo. This is perfect. Yes. Um, I feel so like the music bad. is almost, you know, when you're at Disney World and you're walking down Main Street and it's like, this is music <laughs> played to be background music yes. and give it atmosphere. It's, it's giving me that. Does it sound um, like Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, like music? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And so Delnus arrives. She's dressed in her typical fair uh, Mira. Nothing fancy yet for the gala. Uh, just a black smock-like set of clothes and a tall uh, cylindrical hat with a big, big, okay. big spike on the top. Love it. You can tell a lot about the quality of a necromancer by the quality of their smock. <laughs> also by um, how tall their hat is. That's true. Uh, Mira, upon seeing Delnus, clears her throat. throat) She's smiling. Oh, God. Delnus Raythren, as a show of invitation to the gala, I have written you this poem. Mira clears her throat again. To my girlfriend, the wonderful Delnus, who fills my heart and soul with wellness, the dance of winter starts tonight. Among the snow, my heart's alight. My hope is for just one grand eve, a dance with you, heart on my sleeve. Please join me at the winner's table, where hand in hand, just say you're able. My feelings for you could fill a novella. Let's make tonight the night of Delra. Will you go with me? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Ship name oh my. drop. What oh up? my god. Um, okay. 
So during this time, the pipes play. There's a strumming of banjo in the background. Elric is nearby looking on <laughs> with like glee of like, ah, my greatest student. <laughs> such a such a professional at this. I my my future is in good hands. This song written in my pocket. And he like taps his like breast pocket on his shirt where the folded up piece of paper lives and just nods in happiness. Uh, Delness is smiling, beaming uh, this great smile on this wintry morning throughout all of it, her face going slightly red as you go through it, and it gets a bit dorky. Um, A bit. A bit. (laughs) (laughs) What are the other members, uh, what are the other members of Swim doing? Um, is, is Is it my turn? Is it my turn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to point at the birds and mm. to cue them. Like, it's their ah, time to shine. Excellent. Integrity Idleberry asks if it's her turn. As Della goes to open her mouth and say, I'll absolutely... And Integrity butts in and says, oh, is it my time? Uh, <laughs> and points up to the birds, of which there are hundreds. They've been quiet up to this point. Oh, no. Watching on at the musical endeavor (laughs) and the poetics below, unknowing as they are dumb little birds. But they do know the hand sign when integrity points to them. And they all begin to sing in a great chorus. Over top the end of your poem, Mira, and over top this wonderful music. Ay, ay, ay! At the top of their lungs, this shrieking shouts out the campus, this beautiful wintry uh, atmosphere, this romantic kind of mood which you've set, the glowing... the glowing fairy fired objects and this wonderful music is drowned out by screaming birds uh, at the top of their lungs. Uh, Mira, you barely hear Delness shout over the commotion. She goes, I would love to go with you. Um, okay, that's great. Sorry it's so loud. Integrity, was this the idea? Hi, hi, What did you say? I said it's so loud. I, 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 I. I didn't tell the them to screech. do this. I told them to do something else. The birds flock down and seem to start landing on the members of this backing band, Mira. <laughs> uh, we see a turtle, a turtle person, or tortoise person <laughs> with a brilliantly painted purple shell. Uh, they seem to not really care that much. Uh, we see a kind of uh, humanoid fox-like person, uh, a, a fox folk, uh, who is playing a wonderful flute, who kind of flinches as a big raven lands on the end of the flute, and you hear that note kind of just, oh and my God. In, in, the, in it as the flute is kind of pulled away from their mouth. Uh, we see a, a dwarf with tanned skin and braided hair playing a banjo uh, happily. The crows land on them, and it seems to just really fit the aesthetic, honestly. And finally, we see a, a, a ha- tall, beefy half-orc, uh, these dreadlocks and dark green skin, also playing a set of uh, pipes. And as the crows begin to descend and this kind of like yelling goes back and forth, Mira, between you and Delness, uh, the, the birds do land on him and he starts to shriek at the top of his lungs and he goes, oh, get them off me, get them off me! And then begins to run as fast as possible uh, for cover, running away, uh, a fear of birds on display for all. Oh, no. uh, though Del or though Mira Delness does walk closer to you amidst this great commotion, and we'll she say, said yes. That's the important thing. She said yes, and she'll say, "This was really romantic, and thank you so much." Oh, and she'll of course. give you a very big kiss. Glad you like the birds. <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> like the birds. It's oh, okay. What should we but do about the birds? But the rest of it's birds. great. Okay, good. I'll, I'll, I'll avoid the birds for future. Should I get some, I can get Felice to make me a dress or something for today. Do you have, do, should we match or do, should I just do my own thing? Um, that's a great idea, but I am going to do a costume change partway through after the duel. So mm. we can always match each other's color schemes. I'll send you a list. Psst, by the way, um, you're going to be my plus one at the winner's table. So if there's ever any confusion, mine's going to be the one with the Krorigami footprints on it. Okay, perfect. And she'll... Like, you two are just embracing, and you're whispering this in your ear. The birds are freaking out. Integrity, uh, Winsler, Sarah, would you like to deal with the birds in some manner? As we, like, wrap this up, how do you, like, shoo them away, I guess? uh, Didn't you make a hand signal for them to stop? Um, 
meanwhile integrity is like doing like a like a like arms open wide legs open wide like trying to block delra from the birds <laughs> and then yes yelling at them to stop i'm like i told you this is not what i said this is not what i said why don't you ever listen to me <laughs> there's there's shrieks from above i i and then one lands on your shoulder integrity and like puts its like big giant raven head near your ear and goes beep 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 beep, beep <laughs> and then flies <laughs> off uh, the into fuck? the air. You can all swish them away. Uh, the the romance was attenuated. It was lowered, but nonetheless, the intimate expression of your 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 feelings, Mira, are conveyed. And your girlfriend says yes, and that's all that matters. That's the important really. thing. Um, and so from here, I think one individual amongst this group, you hear. A voice call out to you as you watch your friends swat away uh, birds and embrace their girlfriend and ask them out. Saren, up, you hear someone crunch, 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 crunch as they walk up hastily marching towards you oh, and no. say, Lady Cinderman! Yeah. Ah, there you are. You had escaped my glance. Just saw, just saw this, the, the earth this morning. I, 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 my vigilance through the night has drained my attention. But don't tell your lord father or lady mother such things. Ah, and he'll check a big sundial on their wrist and say, They arrive shortly, Lady Cinderman. Shall we prepare ourselves? The herald. The herald rushes towards you, sleep deprived eyes and some drool by his chin. Yeah. He <laughs> waits for your answer. Um, I'm going to cast um mm-hmm. message to integrity yes. and say, I- I'll try and get a uh, tell your mom I'm sorry about the meeting not happening. Um maybe after the gala. We might have time then. And I say, mm-hmm. yes, let's uh, let's make our way. Integrity, do you respond in any particular fashion? Let's do this message. I'm going to say, don't worry about it. My mom can talk to you in the gala, after the gala, whenever you have time. There's no rush. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Lady Cinderman, you are escorted mm-hmm. by a noble herald. He wields a large pole arm with a great banner upon it. We haven't really described, uh, I've been just saying pretty fucking loosey-goosey, uh, there's like the Cinderman crest or, uh, emblem of the family on this banner, Serenap. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically, fill in that detail. What is that emblem which would be on the banner and representing your family? Ooh, I think a long time ago we had said something about it, but I don't. Yes, hmm. there was some brooch of a sort, but that could be more of a family heirloom from a, a different family surname. This is a noble family of uh, great renown, or some renown, uh, so uh, so feel free to get wild with it. It's been 1650 episodes, so like, uh, <laughs> no one knows, you know, people uh-huh. don't remember that. I imagine like... Like, obviously, like, the very dark, rich blue is, like, yes. the color of her family. Mm. And I imagine the, I imagine, like, an a- an animal would represent the house yeah. as well. Which animal? Um, I would say, uh, like, for some obvious reasons, it yeah. would be a dragon. Fuck yes. <laughs> and so, like, it's kind of like the dragon is the, in the shape, a very loose okay. shape of an S. Ooh. Yes, that slaps so hard. And, and is the dragon... Oh, this is great. I imagine like the dragon is maybe holding something like something to like be like a symbol of like prosperity, though nothing is really coming to mm. mind right away. Mm. It's maybe like a plant of some sort. Like, yeah. What about like a branch of holly or something? Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Like, so like the dragon's like holding a branch of holly and it's kind of like in this like deep, rich blue, like kind of like just kind of like abyss of yes. color. Like, yes. I love family. Oh, and, and like emblems. the the um the dragon would be silver because the family colors yes. are dark, are deep blue and silver. Fuck yes, um, excellent, Serenup. So you are escorted fast, but not so fast, a, a noble speed, as it mm. were, towards the concourse, a place most familiar. As you approach Serenup. There is a small hum in the air, right? Because as you round a corner and finally have a clear sight of it, you see that there are many people gathered here, or at least a a fair-sized crowd. Some of them noble, uh, gathered together 
in front, almost like a a waiting party or a party. Like if you go to the airport or a dock and you are Mm -hmm. waiting for people to come off towards you, gathered in such a manner, very ceremonial looking. Everyone is very dressed. You do, uh, in a quick glance, see some other upperclassmen, uh, human nobility, human students, and their families gathered, uh, as well as certain guards associated with them. Uh, you additionally see your fellow first-year noble students, uh, Karina Lindman, with hair pulled in a very tightly braided bun uh, to her head with her straight bangs, standing with a straight back and a high-collared uh, dress on uh, next to her parents. Her mother, a similar harsh-looking woman, and her father, a uh, man with a cane who's uh, a bit plump and uh, has a rather r- robust nose. Uh, you additionally see Philip Maisel standing properly with his parents, his eyes a brilliant yellow color. He did neither one of them. Er- Philip, at the very least, does not look over to you when you approach Serenath. However, Karina, as well as her mother, uh, does look over to you. The Herald brings you to stand next to the Lindmans, uh, on essentially in the front row of this small uh, ensemble. There is additionally someone else here named uh, Crow. Uh, Headmaster Crow is here, as well as some of his like higher staff who are all dressed very properly. Higher staff here, meaning like Kenneth and two other people whose names you do not know. But maybe you'll find out when you go to work. Who the fuck knows? (laughs) At the moment, they're unnamed, well-dressed folks. Okay. As you stand here, you see that this small noble crowd has kind of surrounding it, almost like the word got out of who was showing up today. There is some like regular students gathered around, either on the second floor of buildings nearby or like leaning against walls on this main floor, but much further away. So as not to be like close enough to be considered like a danger or something, but hoping to see the uh, uh, glimpse of royalty or of this new princess student who is the rumors are circulating about. And Serenup, as you stand here, what's going through your head? A uh, cacophony of swear words. <laughs> <laughs> like, Excellent. Like, like she's kind of go- because like she dressed, she she wants to keep a good impression, so she's dressed yes. herself according to the contract, and she's going through her head like, okay, I'm wearing like I'm not wearing these types of shoes. I'm wearing yes. this type of like fabric like just making Mm. sure everything's like just going through like a checklist Mm. in her head like okay so this is the stuff that we have to do for when my parents arrive and just kind of trying to zone in on like uh, of like perfect professional daughter mode my uniform proper yes Mm. as you're standing here in your own head going through this checklist there is a small subtle tug at the elbow of your clothes you can look to your left and see that uh, the lady Lindman, Karina and Angelica's, but Karina's mother has tugged on your clothes and is leaned over uh, and has the body language of someone who would like to whisper something in your ear if you'll allow her. I very subtly like shift my body slightly to bring my ear closer to her. Mm. She'll whisper, hushed so that only you can hear her. I thank you for your betrothal and all of these things, Miss Cinderman, Lady Cinderman, I should say. Such things have increased the allure of your contemporaries and colleagues. Why, our very own Karina was not worth much salt until you became betrothed to the prince, and now magic has become all the rage. So thank you very much. And we'll give you a very venomous kind of smile. Uh, Serenup and lean away. Serenup has like her hands kind of crossed in front of her body as like mm-hmm. like the proper pose, and she's just kind of crushing her hands together. Mm, but yes. she kind of gives Knuckles like white. She like gives like a brief a, a brief smile and like gives like a nod, but doesn't like say anything. <laughs> of course, uh, Karina, her eyes dart over to you quickly. Serenup, you could make an insight check if you would like to. I would like to. I will do that, and I'm hoping that this is not the cursed die. <laughs> so, oh, that's actually pretty decent. Uh, insight, 18 plus 5 is 23. Oh, shit. All right. I know everything. Pretty uh, decent. You, Karina Lindman, glances at you, not moving her face, still looking forwards and just glances at you uh, out, the, out of the side of her eyes with a look of having heard what her mother just said to you and a very quick kind of tightness of the jaw 
indicates that uh, she resents what her mother just said to you. And almost the look lasts for a moment as if she would almost like to lean over and say something to you, but knows that this is not the proper time. And her eyes glance back forwards. Just a sing- like a few m- seconds, mere seconds, but the you know what th- that all of this, all of this emotion conveyed in such a brief time, Serena. I would like to give her a, like, a genuine smile, like a mm-hmm. I'm here for you sort of thing, just like. Of course. Of course. She does see it and looks back forwards, awaiting the arrival of the people who show up right now. There is a stone archway in front of you in the wall of this cave. It is plain, and you've seen it take the form of many doors throughout your year here, Serenup. Artis's door and Damati's door, the Raythrin's door, eh, probably some others, but those are the main ones. None of them too grand, although I would say that the uh, Raythrin estate doors are very nice. The doors which form in front of you in the concourse wall, which magically take shape uh, and almost seem to carve themselves out of the stone, are grand and gilded with very intricate work. You can see the engravings of uh, dragons and horses, lions, uh, large stags and fish jumping in the air, all up these columns which border these two doors. And And they will swing open and a bright light will shine forth from them. Accompanied by this light, there is the regal sounds of music playing on brass instruments and a quick stepping sound as people walk ceremonially through these doors onto the Wildcliff campus. The first people you see are holding aloft banners, similar to your own uh, noble herald, Serenath. These banners are that of the royal family. They are a greenish-blue kind of fabric with seven bright white and silver fish upon it. Marlins, to be specific. Large and powerful and fast fish, if you know anything. Stepping out through the doors behind this flag banner, or this banner carrier, is a couple, likely in their 50s. One wears a tall crown upon his gray hair, and the other wears a smaller crown upon her still jet black hair. You recognize them, Serenup Cinderman, and even if you didn't, you would very quickly learn, as does as do all of these other students watching from uh, their positions, that this is, as the herald walking out the door yells, Welcome! The King of Ashua, Fr- Good King Frederick the Third of Brickhall, and his noble wife Queen Magdalena of Birch Hall, uh, and the two walk hand in hand towards you in a very, very elegant robes. Serenepth, uh, the king, watching him for a moment, has a bit of a limp in his right leg. He has a filled in beard almost prepared for the winter already a mix of brown and gray he has a kind of grizzled face almost as if he's squinted at the sun for too many years and wears many rings on all his fingers uh his counterpart uh, the queen magdalena uh has a very a set of very small eyes. You can barely see like the brown color of them. It's almost like she has just like scrunched her face at you directly, Serenepth, immediately. And she has a longer face and is wearing a very flowing uh, gown of greenish blue. Behind them, two young, younger children walk out. The herald will continue and say, Welcome! The king's son, Ovid, and the queen's daughter, Lorelai. You see a 10-year-old boy dressed in quite proper and prim clothes walk out, uh, standing next to but not holding hands with his sister, a young girl of 14 uh, who's dressed similarly to her mother and looks quite the spitting image, if just uh, slightly young. Finally, walking out behind these two young kids... 
is a strapping young man Uh-oh. dressed in all white, uh, very nicely tailored clothes, staring up. It is this stark white color with greenish blue trim to it. Many medals clink on his chest as he walks out. He has a bowl cut of jet black hair high. His neck is thick oh like a small tree trunk. Oh my God. Uh, he stands about six foot three tall and has a dashing and wide jaw. The herald will say, Welcome, Prince Frederick, heir apparent and esteemed officer of the Royal Navy. And he walks out. He has at his side a very ceremonial golden sword, Serenup, strapped to his waist. And a attendant walks next to him, carrying a brilliantly made, uh, almost handcrafted, and thousands of hours of work gone into it, kind of wooden box. It's flat like you would keep a uh, dress or some blanket in. Uh, and they, he, they too do walk out. The royals gather in a small line in front of you, the awaiting nobility, and will uh, look across the lot of you as people go to their knees, Crow, the Lindmans, the Maisels, those other upper years. The herald in front of you, Serenup, does stay standing as he must to hold up this flag, this banner of your family, but you too must drop to a knee. Yep. The royals, the king and queen, Frederick and Magdalena, approach Headmaster Crow. And in a voice which, with much gravitas, Serenup, the king does say, Headmaster Crow, we appreciate your warm welcome to this renowned institute and place our safety and trust in you while on its premises. <laughs> Please rise, and Headmaster Crow, looking ever so much younger than he normally does. You must recall, he is a mid-twenties kind of man with dark skin. He does look much younger, much more, like, humanized for a moment, and less like this looming entrepreneurial figure to you, Serenep. And he does rise, and the king grasps his hand and shakes it firmly, uh, granting him a very charming smile. And then their eyes turn to you, Serenup Cinnamon. And they will walk slowly over towards you and look you up and down from toe to tip. The King Frederick III will say in that same voice, Young Lady Cinderman, I hope that the year has found you well. Please rise. Stands up. The Queen will address you and say, I look forward to the day you are joined to our own family. But until that day, please regard yourself as a member of this family nonetheless. My dear sweet Serenep, the king continues her sentence as it seems and will say, The young prince is just that, a young man. We ask that you can impart some patience and wisdom that you've gained in this great school to him and keep him acting in accordance with his position, that of humility and gentleness. The Queen Mother, Serenep, will kind of take a step towards you and hand to you from her own hand a white metal ring. And she will say, please take this as a token of our love and affection for you as a new member of this, the royal family. It is a small white metal ring with a marlin on the front of it, Serenep. Um... Would you like to take it? Yeah, Sarah Nep's gonna curtsy and thanks. Like she, mm-hmm. she can't. There's she was not expecting the king and queen to <laughs> fucking walk through this door, man. Yeah, she she like curtsies and says like, a quiet like, "Thank you so much for this wonderful offering." And she takes the ring. The two bow their heads deeply and return to standing in this line. Next, this strapping young man. He looks to be about twenty three. Sarah Nep struts towards you. (laughs) The attendant at his side holding that box, walking with a similar cadence, but none of, like, the pomp, none of the charisma of this man. He will look you up and down, Serenep, as he walks, and smile greatly at you. He is clean-shaven, unlike his father, though you can see the distinct resemblance he has to the man. And he will say, Lady Cinderman, ever so beautiful you are, 
as the twilight sky, seen from great heights. I've been many and far across this great world, and never so much beauty have I seen in a single person. <laughs> he will turn to the attendant and open this box that he is holding, and from it he pulls kind of a cloak, kind of a shawl made of heath, this brilliant pink flower braided together, Serenep. He will pull it out and kind of flick it to unfold it completely. The attendant bows and like scurries away, their feet barely making a sound against the stones. Young Prince Fred will turn back to you, Serenep, and say, For you, my greatest love, I have made this braided of my own hand night after night for nigh these past weeks. A symbol, a token of my love for you come nigh this spring, this summer, this autumn, this winter. A cloak of heath to show my love and admiration, my commitment to you, my beloved and betrothed. And he will gesture as if he wants to place this cloak of heath upon oh you, Serena. If you would allow him to. I need a moment, please. <laughs> <laughs> so much shit is happening Bro, at once. Philip's got to step up his competition, honestly. Oh my god. I, oh my god. Okay. This fucking guy. <laughs> Prince Fred! Uh, Prince Fred, I love you! Like, she, she, oh my god. Cool. There, is a, there is a hush to the crowd as they're all like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> Watching on. <laughs> Is she, uh, she gonna accept? Is she gonna accept? Do you think she's gonna? No, please yes. don't, please don't do that. Oh my gosh, um, she's so hot. Um, Sarah Nepth is going to again curtsy and allow mm. him to put it. He places on her. it upon your back, gently so, resting it upon you and your shoulders. He will tie it in the front with a nice golden chain, which has been like you look at it now, Sarah. Or fuck, Oops. you look at it now, Sarah Nepth. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of a ham-fisted fastener of sorts. You do not understand why he chose to knit and braid Heath together onto a golden chain of sorts. Homeboy's but not it does, like his brain does work. Just, yeah, yeah. He was, it was a good gesture, but this is kind of weird. <laughs> he puts it upon you and fastens it for you, and he will run his hand along your like cheek down towards your chin and hold you there. You feel his calloused and wide hands. That Those of a sailor who has worked hard on a boat, Serenep, and he will say, Oh, I do long for the day that you will be my wife through and through. Would you grant me the honor to accompany you through the day until the gala as our time together is short and precious and I fear to not see you again afterwards? <laughs> As he holds your chin ever so gently, Serena. Uh, uh, everything Meeting just your done. brilliant eyes with his dark brown eyes. <laughs> she <laughs> will because she has to play nicety with this. So she's like yes. she um says, I would be honored if you would uh join me today, yes. Of course. And he will take your hand and kiss it greatly, <laughs> gently, Sarah Nepp. Uh, and then almost like walking backwards, he doesn't want to let go of your hand, but does so <laughs> and kind of returns to his place, standing in line with his family members. Can I, What's like, up, Sarah Nepp? I want to do like an insight check on this dude. Oh you can do an insight check on him. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. I need to see if like, is there something <laughs> like was a spell put on him? Like I need to like... <laughs> I, I this, need to like. At this point, do you think rumors have spread through the school that the. Oh, absolutely. Here? Absolutely, yeah. Integrity Idleberry. Yes, everyone is talking about this. There was other rumors going around, but this is the one. Someone barged into dining hall and said, everyone. <laughs> The Asherman royal family is here right now. The prince is here. hes It's so romantic. And they just like, 17 people get up and leave. Oh, if so, I'm one of them. Hall. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I'm <amazing>. totally <laughs> watching this. Yes, you gather in the crowd. <laughs> you see Serenith trying not to like, like, it's so <laughs> subtle that no one else notices, but you've been around her long enough. She's like, ugh, eh. <laughs> like, this is gross. Like, no. uh, Sarah Nuff, what was that insight check on you? <laughs> that was a 15 plus 5, 20. Ooh. Is this dude under some kind of weird spell or is this just how the dude is? Just in love with you. 
Uh, he seems head over heels genuinely infatuated. Oh, with dear. Mm. Okay. And he cannot take his eyes off of you. The most uh, As he stands there sight. in line. <laughs> A trumpeting continues, and that herald standing by the side of the concourse does so continue as well and says, Ahem, carrying on, I now would like to announce the Lord and Lady Cinderman approaching to visit their daughter, the betrothed to the prince. And so walking through this door, Uh finally, Serenep are a couple, your mother and father, holding hands in a similar fashion to the way that the king and queen were, but without as much of that loving embrace between them. They are wearing silver and blue, of course, the family colors, and of course they also have a banner-wielding herald in addition to your own. Would you like to describe your parents for us? Of course. I think I think one of the most shocking things is how young they appear. Mm. Them having followed the family tradition of getting married um, much earlier than how like Sarah has been evading it for so long. Mm. They got married the first time and yep. they had Sarah and everything like that. Um, they're probably at this point in their like mid 30s, like maybe oh, like, geez. yeah, they like they they follow the contract. They did everything like right yep. away sort of thing. Um, But you can definitely tell that they're. Serenep's parents except for the fact that you don't they don't have like her father especially like you don't see any like scales it's like completely smooth her mother doesn't have Mm -hmm. any like indents on her cheeks or anything like that to like Mm -hmm. show Mm -hmm. any kind of scaling that would be hidden Mm -hmm. by makeup like it's just a hundred percent human plain complexion Mm -hmm. I imagine your father looking to be a grim sort of man Mm -hmm. like a kind of grim expression upon his face does that track yeah, like very like grim, very like stern, and her mother holds yes. the same kind of expression. Like they work, they tag team this whole thing. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. wasn't like a step where they disagreed on this sort of thing. Yes. Like they're very much to the they same are people. In sync, yes. Okay. They walk out with all of the charisma of cold and calculating individuals, and will stand in line with these royals that bannerman standing next to them, holding it aloft, and they will look over to you, Serenep, and approach you. Your father will say to you, after a careful examination, looking you up and down, he'll give you a s- wide kind of smile. There's, It does not reach the eyes, of course. That goes without saying. Uh, and will say, Oh, my great daughter, how long have I awaited to see you once more? I'm glad you are doing so well. And your mother, Serenepth, will pull in for a embrace of a sort, similar to the queen, like, without any of the warmth that was there. Whether that warmth was fake or not, there is none here. Uh, and will whisper in your ear a quick thing and say, We heard tales of you consorting still with the estranged Lindemann girl. Please make sure that rumors such as this do not reach the royal family while they are here. And then she will, as quickly as she reached in to whisper that in your ear, reach back out and kiss you on the cheek and say, Oh, my lovely young daughter, how wonderful you do seem. How blossomed you seem to have been in the past year. You look so extravagant. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad everyone else is following me. Do not vibe. Do not vibe. (laughs) Hate. Um... Serenef will give them both a smile as well. Um, mm-hmm. she'll like put in the effort to like crinkle the eyes and everything just to like yes. this is this is like the royalty game, like you know how mm-hmm. it works and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. She'll smile, she'll give another curtsy to both of them as well, as they are her parents and everything. And she'll say, It's been such a long year, but it's wonderful to see you both here um with me. Um, I'm excited for you to see the gala. As are we, my dear girl. There is conversations yet to be had between us and uh, our good king, but I trust that young Prince Fred will keep you company until this evening when we can have a proper conversation over dinner. She, like, bows her head to her to her parents. Oh, no. And your father will reach out and kind of grab your hand in a very, like, uh, how to describe this? 
not in a comforting manner, but in a very much like pleased, pleased manner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem to have done great, Serenuf, by all regards, as your lord and lady father return to their position. As they do so, Crow will look over to you and await to see if you have anything to say. Again, like her brain is not Mm -hmm. at full capacity at this moment. So she's just like smiling to everybody, like trying to Mm -hmm. wait until they finally dismiss Mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, those, by the way, those two like little young royal kids, uh, Ovid and Lorelai, are staring at you very appraisingly uh, with a judgment that is not present in the others' eyes. Uh, <laughs> but don't read into that. Anyways, they know too much. <laughs> Headmaster Crow, seeing that you are not going to be making any other uh, grand noble declarations, will say, uh, Very well, my king and queen. If you would follow me, I will take you to uh, chambers of some privacy so that you might uh, be prepared after your long and weary journey before the gala begins this evening, Uh, just after me. Uh, And he will begin to lead this large group off, all save for the young Prince Fred, Serenup, Mm. who struts back to you and will grab you by the waist and will say, very well. Where are we off to first? Did you wish to just, we could walk the campus and I could tell you grand tales from my own personal history, things, adventures, great acts of heroism, nautical tales, if that was not to bore you. Or you could share with me great mysteries of the arcane (laughs) and tell me of magic, if that is to be your wish. Um, I think... (laughs) <laughs> As the crowd disperses, kind of, there is still so many eyes upon you, Sereno. I know. Uh, I think she will move her hand so that, like, she kind of links her elbow with his, yes. like... Easily done, yes. And, um... You feel the rippling muscle of his arms as you link elbows with him? Mm, he's definitely trying to flex. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes! <laughs> is integrity still there? <laughs> integrity is nearby. Integrity, did you want to be perceived or perceivable? Um, I think I might be obvious, like staring <laughs> at the prince. <laughs> of course, of course. So like, it's like, it's like, it's like he... when you meet a celebrity in yeah. like on the streets, and you're like just mm-hmm. trying to casually um be Check walking. Them out? Yes, or like when you see your teacher at Walmart, and oh my god. <laughs> And, like, you want to be perceived because you're like, oh, my gosh, you're not supposed, like, w- like we're in the same place together, but that's so yeah. weird. But you want to be, like, cool. So that's what Integrity is doing. I see. Um, Integrity is being cool, but perceivable. Fair enough, if you were to look around, you could easily see your cousin amidst the crowd of onlookers. Um, I think, I think what she'll do in this case is that she, like, she'll, like, she'll link the arms and everything, and she'll say, well... Um, there is a lovely market happening, and while we walk, I would love to hear stories of your adventures. Of course, the great adventures. Oh, I did so, I do so enjoy and miss the sea, but noble duty, royal duty, obligation of birth does so call, and so I have hung up my time at sea and come back to land for beauties such as you and obligations oh so great <laughs> and so if he tries to rub his hand on your face again and you just like meet the hand and bring it back down as the two yeah, of she you like, walk she does it to like oh I thought you wanted to hold my hand yes. and not like and please stop touching my does, face and then you can quickly let it go and just go back to only linking arms and then walk <laughs> past are you walking past integrity idleberry um, or would you like to interact with her, or are you specifically avoiding her? While my parents are here, like she's mm-hmm. trying to like, especially okay. integrity, given perfect, like her family perfect. and everything. Yes, excellent. But she so. will cast message. Ooh. Oh, excellent! And it, it's just um, let's try our best to avoid each other. Oh. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, I hate you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't say that. I'll t- like, like, let's try our best to avoid each other, myself and Wim. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but at the end, she like tries to make eye contact, and she's and she says, "I love you guys." At that, and point, she'll kind of like, yeah, take the prints off. 
<laughs> yes, integrity. You I am, I am going to respond. First off, I'm going to say, I know you love us, but oh my gosh, the prince looks more beautiful than they described him. To oh me. my god! <laughs> <laughs> what, what is, what is okay, this you weird what? like love chain? Integrity's thirsty. Because of that response, yeah. she's gonna ca- okay. Now it's become like gossip time. She's cast message back, and she goes, "Do you want me to try and set you up with him? Oh I will." God. Say the word. I'm going Integrity. To... You see this man in his perfectly tailored uniform or clothes, just so nicely clinging to his rippling muscle underneath. The cloth is thin despite the winter time, and so it <laughs> sits ever so gently over those beautiful muscles. Also, I want to explain. I'm saying it as like a joke for her yes. response, and as yeah. like uh, a joking thread of like, don't don't make me do this. <laughs> Integrity belly laughs at that. So, like, Integrity's just, like... Oh, my God. <laughs> standing there, and all of a sudden, like, lies down on the ground laughing so hard. <laughs> Holy shit. The people around you, Integrity, look at her, look down at you, and then, like, turn to their friends and go, I mean, I get it. Uh, it's and, like, they go about their day and just, like, disperse. Staring up, you bring the prince and show him through the market. He tells you of a lot of nautical tales, a lot about <laughs> boats... And oceans, and how this one really big fish he caught. <laughs> yeah, he tells you about this time that they went out in the boat, him and uh, Yosef and Delorpoli. That's a name. Delorpoli. Was a half Delorpoli. Yes. Delorpoli. 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 And they went out all together in the boat, and like just had a hand line, and and we were just pulling in this giant, this great fish for hours and hours and he shows you his hands and there's still small scars on his hands and he's like and the rope it did so, it burnt through right there but I could not let it go, my pride was too great and and and, and the glory of bringing in such a fish for the boat was oh so glorious, you would understand anyone would do it and stories like that that are 0% interesting Sarah. Well hear me out, she enjoy- she likes adventure stories Oh, like she yeah. read, like she read adventure stories growing up and everything. So like, I think her ask because like she, mm-hmm. like because if she talks about magic, it's gonna be like yeah. all weird and technical and like she knows it's, it's gonna so be boring. Over his head. <laughs> and so like she's like let him, letting him tell these crazy stories and mm-hmm. they're interesting, but not something to like fall in love with a guy over. But he's definitely yeah. trying to push it, and it's like Absolutely. wow, interesting story, like cool. Um, so that's how Saren up spends her day. And the rest of you can spend it decorating masks, doing such things. And we can ever so easily say the day does pass as days so often do (laughs) until the evening approaches. The four of you, some of you accompanied by plus ones and some not. Actually, all of you are accompanied by plus ones or plus Mm. point fives and point fives um, in integrity's case (laughs) can convene without masks on near those towers which border the front of the campus as you were instructed in your letters could you all for me as you convene together in a small bundle of students excitedly talking to one another uh describe to me what you are wearing tonight at the gala oh boy so I think that for Mira's first outfit, she's wearing that uh, that sort of silvery tulle, very poofy dress mm, um, yes. with the, the inlaid snowflake capes. Um, I think that her arm, uh, her prosthetic arm is decorated with like silver, like those kinds of sticky stones that you can get at the dollar store, but like like little <laughs> stickers that kind of glimmer just to just to spice it up a little. I think so that she's cute. got uh, like a, a silver um, star headband on with uh, these mm. snowflake earrings. And I think that she's wearing these tights that basically have like a sheer illusion on the top. Like, you know, those how those leggings like look sheer, but then on the bottom, it looks yes. like these kind of branches climbing up. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and that is going to be her outfit, uh, that and some very nice heels. Excellent. Uh, Delness is here with you as well. She has on her head a very oversized hat. There's a small veil component to it, which does drift ever so just over the, like, just below her eyebrows uh, and and such. Uh, it is in a nice pale yellow uh as well as her dress 
which is a very tight fitting and long kind of thing. Uh, nice long sleeves and a large uh, slit down the back, Mira, almost until the her low back, like a like a V kind of slit on her back. You know th- yeah. what I mean? I yes, excellent, perfect. Uh, and you can walk here, holding in your hands your masquerade masks, mm-hmm. hand in hand. Integrity is wearing a cream-colored dress that is um, short-sleeved, that is slightly puffy with um, and sheer. And mm. the bodice has um, flowers of pink and purples and yellows um, that ends just like around the waist. And then below is sort of like an A-line um, skirt that is low in the back and high in the top so that her shoes are very exposed and yes her shoes are green that matches like the leaves um on her dress um and it's new it looks very fresh because it was a uh, it was shoes that um her mother brought for her when they came and she's just wearing a snowflake necklace a bunch of earrings that are probably Mm -hmm. fake gold because, you know, they can't (laughs) afford it. Um, But she's wearing, like, one of her mother's um, golden rings that is Mm -hmm. actually real from a long, long time ago, and it has, like, a purple amethyst on it. Wonderful. And I'll ask you, because you're pretty tapped into the Idleberry aesthetic, what are your little sister and little brother wearing? Um, My brother is wearing a blue, like, bright blue tut. Tux, not a tusk. <laughs> Bright blue tux. Um, and my sister Nora is wearing a dress that is um, red and black in like the top part. Like the red is sort of lace, um, but the mm. backdrop of that is black. And then the skirt is all the way down to the feet and it's just tulle. So it's very poofy. Okay. It's like a flower girl kind of dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, one on each hand, walk with you to this small congregation integrity. Winsler Wallaby. Oh, oh boy. Um, So to start, um, Winsler is... So for those who remember, um, (laughs) (laughs) Winsler did his shopping with his parents, and they went to the bargain value bin. 92% off. So what Winsler is wearing, he's got like... He's got like a nice long sleeve dress shirt. Uh, it's like a nice, like a nice beige color. He's got suspenders on, um, and he's wearing like some sh- like khaki pants that are like a nice dark brown that go down to his shin. Um, mm-hmm. And he's wearing some black loafers. He's got like striped socks that go up like up until the the end of the Hell khakis. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have must ask Ben, mm-hmm. is there a do the, the do the socks and khakis overlap or is there a small boundary wherein it is just flesh? There is no boundary. They oh, they perfect, go together. Perfect. So they are neat. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um he's got like a nice bow tie. Like it's it's just a very large fluffy bow tie. Uh, uh-huh. and he's also got a nice like beige bowler hat. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh. Excellent. Charlotte is walking next to you, not holding hands no. with you and looking. Her face is so bright red that the orange of her hair, the pink orange red of her face and her complexion, and then the red of her small, like her short dress, all very much blend together in a almost a gradient oh, from right. orange <laughs> down to red. Oh dear. Uh, she, but yes, she is wearing a uh, red dress which covers both of her shoulders, and uh, she's a very short uh, human, uh, and so. It looks like it would be a shorter dress on someone else and goes down just below her knee and flares out quite a bit. Winsler Wallaby. And the two of you walk next to each other. Very clearly, we are together here at this thing, but not quite holding hands unless you wanted to cross that bridge. Um, I think like confidently. I think maybe like before we both like mm-hmm. enter, I think Winsor will like attempt just Absolutely. just so it's like, let's not get lost now. Yes, your your both of your hands kind of like come together a bit awkwardly at first, uh, and then you have to like raise your hand up slightly uh, to reach hers, and you can walk hand in hand together to this small group of students. And finally, 
soon to be Princess Sarah Cinderman. What are you wearing? I'm I kind of imagine like this is like I don't know if it's gonna make sense. A long sleeved floor length like ballroom like yes. dress. Yes. But it also has like it's like of course the family deep rich blue color but the trim on like the sleeves and i imagine it has like i don't remember the proper word for this but like the the cuff around the neck yes that kind of like like closes itself off the yes, trim yes. All, all that is the silver color and mm-hmm. there's like swirls of silver in like if her autumn's and autumn's blend stuff was like reminiscent of like falling leaves this is like fresh snow mm. Perfect. And it just kind of covers her and she's wearing like these white gloves just to, like mm. and just like very like fancy and like Wonderful. classy. You all and accompanying you is Prince Fred, young Prince Fred. <laughs> I love dressed how all in Prince Fred. white as I have so often described already. Uh-huh. Mm. As you all gather here, you see that there are some seventh years, some sixth years. Actually, Mira, you recognize someone you saw already earlier today, that orc, that half orc mm-hmm. who ran away this morning when the birds scared yeah, him. Yeah, the one afraid of uh, birds. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you do see him standing here in like a bright uh like orange and like bright orange top and some like cool black pants. Kind of kind of Halloween energy if you were to know what that was, but nonetheless. Uh, we have Weenie Hollow. Yeah, Weenie Hollow energy. Uh, <laughs> but he seems to be standing here as well with the other seventh years. Uh, you see that there are some sixth years. And, of course, you see that there's some fourth years here. Three of them, to be distinct. Two of them have plus ones. And one, a tall woman with short blonde hair, is here dressed so elegantly in a cool pantsuit. Uh, not with any plus one. And the holding whole world very... is her plus one. The whole world is her plus one. Joan stands <laughs> oh here very cool God. and going stag. As you all gather here, you do make some you might make some idle conversation to pass the moments. Ser- Integrity, did you want to say something? Uh, during these idle conversations, I'm assuming that we're very far away from Joan. Um yes. so I'm gonna be like, so Delness, does Joan have any fears? <laughs> <laughs> Delness is like having a nice conversation and then there's a lull and then Miss Integrity you kind of lean in and say this and she'll say um I don't know I don't know where that's coming from Integrity oh is this for the duel uh, are you gonna try to scare her are you gonna try to scare her during the duel I'm going to nod I'll try let me make an insight check of <laughs> Delness Ooh. Delness racks her brains and will tell you um I mean, she's pretty scared of commitment, if I know anything. <laughs> oh, but, okay, okay. Uh, other than that, nothing nothing really comes to mind, Integrity. Okay, Integrity, you have to flirt with Joan. <laughs> oh, my God. Or we, or we make it so that winning is really bad, because if you win, then you're like you're supposed to be committed to like whatever the title is, I guess you get it. Well, this conversation losing? does so go on, and Integrity's like, ah, interesting, and you all go like, ooh, <laughs> and like some of the other upper years kind of like look over at the group of you first years standing in a small circle. S- you see walking up a very elegant looking Serenep Cinderman, <gasps> accompanied by what a hunk of a prince uh, <laughs> next to her, and they're Gra- like they're together at the elbows, and as they approach, you all, the three of you, can hear uh, Prince Frederick say hello, and it's p- so grand to meet you. I am Prince Frederick, heir apparent, and he'll stick out his hand to you, young Winsler, to shake it. Uh, am I allowed to shake your hand? Uh, and he looks dumbfounded for a moment. <laughs> a blank expression goes over his eyes, and he goes... Is there anything? I- yes, I said so. <laughs> so you should be allowed. All right, I'll, sh- I'll shake your hand, and I'm gonna give. I'll, I'll- it's not hostile. <laughs> I'll shake his hand. I guess. You, sh- you shake his hand. It's almost like his hand could envelop up to almost your elbow. Oh Winsler. Jesus like, Christ! They are sh- like damn. They're sh- like he has. He's just a big dude. I am right? grabbing so, one like- of his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he shakes you your hand. He turns to and like shakes Charlotte's hand as well, and she looks like. Blown away. Charlotte is a, a human, of course, and knows this man and is shocked at royalty. Uh, Integrity, you might have even seen her earlier in that gathered crowd. Uh, and so she seems like shell-shocked to be here. 
Uh, he turns his attention to Mira, you, and Delnus, and will put out a hand to shake yours as well, and says, Ah, you both look absolutely outstanding on this night. Uh, it is a pleasure. I am the royal heir apparent, Prince Frederick. Um, it's an honor to make your acquaintance, your highness, and Mira will shake it. Uh, Yes, no, not quite, your highness. My father's still alive. So until that oh. d- d- dreadful day does so come, I will just be heir apparent. Oh, uh, pardon, pardon me. Feel no need to call me by grand titles, though I'm sure my beloved has told you so much about us. So and much. the titles need, oh, so much. I can't imagine. Oh, and he looks She's for- She's been raving about you. For ages. Oh, has she? Mm-hmm. And he looks so <laughs> lovingly at Sarah now. Oh my god. <laughs> and he'll like reach out a hand absent mindedly towards you, Mira, and shake your hand. Delnus will also sneak a very quick handshake in here and as well and just get it over with. And he just looks lovingly at infatuatedly at Sarah and like shakes both of your hands. And then we'll turn to integrity, you and your siblings, and we'll say, and of course. The final introduction. I am Prince Frederick. <laughs> oh boy. Heir apparent to the Ashwin Kingdom. It's a pleasure to meet you. You look ravishing tonight. Oh my I'm going to take his hand and I'm going to be like, oh, precious heir apparent, <laughs> is it true that you let go of all those turtles in the middle of the ocean? Yes. <laughs> How many of them were there? Uh, uh. <laughs> there were so many. <laughs> At least oh more than 20. <laughs> <laughs> and he shakes your hand greatly. Uh, Integrity, Idleberry, your two siblings are starstruck. Your brother's positively gobsmacked. And as, you're, as the prince turns to look at him and says, Why, hello, young man. And goes down on one knee and puts a hand on his shoulder and says, You look to be such a strapping young fellow. <laughs> I can't wait until you grow up and join the Navy. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. And, and oh my your God, brother he's trying to with enlist stars people. in his eyes Holy says, shit. yeah, I can't. You're so large and I can't wait <laughs> as well. I, you're amazing. I want to be just like I, you. Oh my God. I can swim f- 50 meters. <laughs> <laughs> and your brother is, 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 oh, like gets a pat on the back. Your younger sister reaches out a hand and the prince will take it and just so, so ceremoniously give it like a very ceremonial kiss on the ah! finger and your sister like blushes greatly in integrity and the prince uh, stands up and will say, well, I look forward to dining with all of you tonight and getting to know you. I'll tell you stories and regale you with my grand exploits. My betrothed, oh, my lovely Serenepth has been telling me so, oh, so much. Has she? I've been telling her oh so much as we've walked the grounds today. I had hoped to learn about magic uh, slightly. And so if you would like to regale me with learnings of most wise magic today, tonight, I would be of great ears to hear (laughs) such things. Check your ear. I think Sarah up because I think like she can kind of see how he's kind of like panicking every once in a while. Yes, and she like she like it's hurts, it's he? less panicking Sarah than more like his mind just turns empty on occasion. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like everything just gets dumped out and he has to reboot. He just like, yes, he just second. goes blank for a minute or a second and then goes back to it. I think. <laughs> Just kind of like without thinking of the implications, she squeezes his hand encouragingly like, you're doing okay. Like, Oh, perfect. He squeezes back with tender love and affection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, as you all stand here and are forcibly regaled with tales of uh, Prince Frederick's exploits for like five minutes, he does not <laughs> give you a moment to butt in. Uh, you hear a breath-clearing sound. Ahem, <laughs> from nearby, you see approaching a tall, skinny man with a hunch. He has a sunken face and looks quite stressed out. You see Kenneth Horse Wrangler. He's dressed in a grayish set of robes and holds a wooden mask in his hands and will say, gather round, gather round before we get um going. Uh, everyone, uh, I, I, on behalf of Headmaster Crow, would like to welcome you all to the gala of Frost First Chilling Grasp. You as the champions, 
will be brought in in procession following our other guests of uh, importance. Uh, and so, uh, and he looks at a small journal in his hands that has an itinerary of things ongoing, and he'll say, okay, okay. Um, and so we'll just walk in pair by pair, and before we do, or don't put the masks on before we do, or else as we introduce you, the magic will kind of fade on them and everyone will know who you are. We'll have a moment once you are seated where you can put the masks on, uh, and at that point, uh, the identities will kind of be solid. Uh, to answer any questions before they even pop up, because I've been fielding these all day from every single student on campus and I'm getting so tired of it, if you tell someone who you are, they'll know who you are. If they come up and look at you too close, they'll know who you are. Other than that, Pretty much just you will not be revealed. It's a fun, fancy thing. Headmaster, uh, Mr. Crow devised it of his own brain. Just such a marvelous idea. And uh, if there's any questions, let me know right now before we start going in. We're already running late. Okay, everyone? Any questions? Do we put the masks on now? Well, I already said don't put the masks <laughs> on now. Put them on when we get to the seat. <laughs> Additionally, when you get to the seat, there will be a bag hanging on the back of your chair. Put any items for the duel in there, and the observers will take it and put it in a box for you. That's very important. There's been some minor breakdowns in the technology, and so there needs to be, like, some stuff redone. Don't read into it. Masks on when you sit down, when you're given the cue. Not a moment before. Thank you very much. Uh, What's any the other cue? Questions? The cue will be me, or, like, Crow being, like, Put your masks on, everyone. And Mr. Crow, you'll see. You'll know. You'll know. He's charismatic. <laughs> Any other questions? We need to get um, going. Do like do we have our dueling clothes ready and everything for yeah, the-, the, the... Some of them are already there. The, anything you have on you that still needs to go in, go in the bag. Mm -hmm. Anything else. Anything else. And it's a regular duel. Is dinner already there or are we going to be waiting? It'll be quick. <laughs> um, are our plus ones also going to have masks? And if not, plus are they still going to know who we are? The plus ones have masks at the desks, at the table, and they will, they, they, you can just tell them this is who I am. Again, if you say to someone this is who I am in private moment, if anything, it'll, you can know who they are. So That's when do simple, the plus ones things. put the masks on? The plus ones also put the masks on <laughs> at the queue. We are so, and then he'll look over his shoulder. Do you have like, a plus so... one? I don't. I'm running everything. <laughs> Sarah so is like. Is there any other questions? Sarah is like fixing up their like. Mask I don't know if I said it earlier. Like she's yes. fixing up like her head, yes. her head like scarf, like yes, making yes, yes. it look more presentable. And she's just smirking to herself as they just drive this guy Prince, crazy. Prince Fred puts a little finger up and goes, "I have a question. How how do the masks stay on?" Oh. Uh, and. You know, he, has a, he has a point. I don't really see any, like, strings on them. Yeah, is that also, magic? like, a magical thing or what? It's a magical thing. <laughs> it's also a magical thing. If, so, so it's like a, almost a magical, you all know, like, glue, like, what, like, what's, like, you take a horse, you bring it to the factory and it gets turned to glue, right? You know, you're all familiar. Wait, what? That's how you get glue? <laughs> what? I don't, I, I, so, I cover Ernest's ears the horses go. as he says that. I cover so, Ernest's ears. It's a similar thing like that, except, um, magic. It's just magic. Okay. Don't, qu the abjurers <laughs> do a great job. It's just going to stick on there. It shouldn't jostle off. You should take it off, though, for the duel so that everyone mm -hmm. knows who you are to avoid people <laughs> fighting each other. Um, so can we tell that, our group on. who we are and then not tell the people in the other group so they don't know who you to could. fight? You okay. You could do that if you want. Don't advise it, though. Is, are these new <laughs> masks? Anything else? Are these new masks or are they reused? Yours are new, made new for this year. Uh, big stipend for events planning. It's been great. Uh, <laughs> the other masks distributed to the other students who did not make the cut. Those are recycled and just kind of re-enchanted. Is there any other questions? <laughs> we're, can, we, can we keep we're, them? We're, we are. You can keep them. We are so late. We are so late. The music yeah. might have stopped What's by now. What's taking can, so long? <laughs> can we keep going? Can we keep going? Can we go? Can everyone ready? Everyone What's taking so long? You are taking so long. Uh, <laughs> and he Whoa. like turns back. <laughs> he puts his wicker kind of mask on his face and will begin to walk quickly around the circumference of the tower, all of you walking Man, as wow, well. In, in guys, guys, one one time without making the attendants want to pull their hair out, please. We were just asking questions. He yeah. Said, 
He said if I we saw had the ex- any questions, we had to ask him. Uh-huh. I saw the expressions on your faces halfway through. Don't even <laughs> pretend. Also, I saw the question. your expression on your face, Sarah Nap. I don't know what you you're talking You are loving about. this. You are loving this. <laughs> it's a great thing this. to love. And, and <laughs> Prince uh. Frederick rips her hand tightly and goes, It is great. I'm loving this as well. It's so excellent. Being around people of my own age for the first time in years. Being around my beloved. Oh, such a great time. Uh. A brilliant night. Such a great way to ring in the new year. Uh, I think everyone's like me. moving apart from Frederick and he starts like going off again. He's just like, okay, we've had enough fun. And you all walk in procession behind Kenneth Horse Wrangler around the circumference of this tower. And there's a couple things of note, first and foremost. One is that there is a small path which seems to have been made. It's almost like a stoned path but it looks to be made of ice of a sort. As you walk, Ooh. it isn't slippery. There is quite a bit of grip, uh, but it does seem to have been made in in the night. There was not typically a traditionally a path here that led between the towers. And as you walk, it almost looks as if Kenneth Horse Wrangler is leading you to go off of the cliff. As a, as a, <laughs> uh, uh, this is the assassination right? attempt we were warned about. <laughs> <laughs> and from beyond the cliff, Mirab, you might hear it first and foremost with your impeccable hearing. You do hear music being played, background, wonderful, <laughs> like very regal sounding music, not of a particular ooh, or hmm. What do what music should we have playing here? Like what like do we want gnomish music? Is that fun? Is that fun? Ooh. What's what? gnomish music sound like? I imagine it would be a lot of like wind instruments. Oh, like, excellent! And maybe a couple like big drums. Yes, yeah, this, that this sounds beautiful. that sounds good. Yes, this beautiful sound of wind instruments gently caresses your ears, coming from a uh, indeterminate void uh, in front of the cliff. I feel like there's triangles at play too in gnomish music. Like there's definitely someone oh, playing the triangle. Oh, there's a lot of oh triangles. My God. Triangles are featured heavily. All the <laughs> like the, the 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 positions of privilege within an orchestra go to the trianglists. Um, it's a grand time. Nonetheless, you do hear this music, and you see. Kenneth step through a shimmery veil in floating there in front of you all, almost as if he's taken one step and passed through the air and just almost vanished into nothingness. (gasps) He's gone. (laughs) Scary. And so you all continue, hesitantly almost, and you are, but to be clear, the four of you are at the front of this procession as the fourth year's, what? Whoa, did what? you just say, Luke? Yo, we we wow, we're whole... fourth years now? I can't wow. believe we jumped we into we another <laughs> time time warp. As the first years, you all are at the front of this procession and hesitantly walk forwards on this iced path and you feel a shimmer go over you as you walk through a small, illusory scape, as it were. It's almost as if someone made an illusory curtain to go around the front of Wildcliff. And as soon as you walk through it, you see a brilliant sight. There is a staircase which extends from the edge of the Wildcliff cliff up probably 15 feet and forwards probably 30 feet. This shallow, grand staircase made entirely of ice. And it leads up to this beautiful structure. This almost, it looks like a temple of sorts, or at least has the facade of a grand temple with this brilliant entryway and large engraved pillars leading up to a peaked roof. And at that roof, you see chains of ice going from the cliff face above the school down into the roof, holding it there in position, tensioned and firm so that the entire gala venue does not collapse off of the side of the cliff. Not that it would. Um, And you see gathered in on the sides of the steps, there are attendants holding aloft brilliant torches of white fire and through that entryway of the, the this gala venue, you hear that gnomish music, triangles, and wind instruments, and the occasional uh, b- great drum beating coming through. And you hear the hubbub and murmur of people, and the procession 
goes up these stairs, across these icy steps, and enters into the gala venue. It is a single room. Uh, above you, there is large balconies where the gnomish orchestra does play, uh, and a small gnomish uh, conductor stands floating between the two balconies on either side of the room and is just conducting everyone ever so gently. He's wearing a long-tailed coat which hangs and blows in the breeze. He seems to be levitating handily on a small platform of ice. There on this side, on the immediately upon entering into the gala venue, there's large round tables made completely of ice at which assorted students and their Families, professors, uh, assistants, attendants, mentors, the general population of Wildcliff are gathered. Uh, it seems that 20, 25 people per table can be seated here, um, and they all watch as this procession of the finest duelists this year's Autumn's End Festival has to offer are marched to triumphant music through the uh, gala venue. You hear a disembodied voice kind of call out each of your names as you enter uh, and say, Representing the first years, the esteemed Serenepth Cinderman, Winsler Wallaby, Integrity Idleberry, and Mira Marchand, accompanied by their loving partners and plus ones as all of you enter. Uh... You are brought by Kenneth Horse Wrangler, who is still marching steadfast in front of you. Uh, and when you're introduced, there's big claps from everyone. You can look around and see your fellow classmates, other first years, some upper years you've interacted with. You see off at a table, not no one's wearing any masks yet. Uh, you see off at tables like Delness's group of friends. Uh, you see your parents all gathered around a table, seated next to Artis Artesian. Uh, he's just <laughs> stuck at that table with all of them, which What's is a wearing? brilliant time. <laughs> Artis Artesian is wearing a long coat, uh, made of a thick wool. It looks very nice. It almost looks a bit new, like he went out and splashed some dang cash for a nice coat. Uh, and underneath, some fairly threadbare, uh, formal clothes. Um, and he looks happily at the lot of you as you happily. march on by, uh, clapping greatly for you all and just looking Aww. relaxed and enthusiastic for you. You are led around the side of the room, the right side of the room, down a set of stairs off of this main dining like layer, this 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 place of eating and cohorting with friends and family and dining uh, down and uh, to a small lowered section almost looking like a dance floor of sorts it's kind of circular uh and and there seems to be a nice icy floor here again the ice isn't anything uh slippery it seems to have been perfectly and magically made just to accommodate the aesthetics of winter while also accommodating the necessity of grip uh, and so you walk down here and are led back up on the other side to another higher raised platform where a long table rests. Two long tables and then a further raised table where you already see people like Headmaster Crow, other counselors. Mira, you see Ala Algrim, Lady of the Woods, sitting there looking oh so brilliant in her golden robes. She doesn't seem to look at you for a moment, Mira. She stares deadly at Delnis Raythrin, however. And Delnis kind of like, you feel her shudder next to you when that gaze washes over her. Kenneth Horse Wrangler leads you to one of these long tables. At each of the plates, your names are engraved on a piece of ice. And it seems additionally there is a chair next to you for a plus one or integrity in your case there are two higher chairs for a plus one and a plus two or a plus half and plus half to make a plus one uh both with your kid siblings names engraved there and masks for them as well everyone is seated the clapping continues for the fourth years joan evelyn kingsley Tyrion mason hall kirk versagor uh the clapping continues for these three fourth years uh as they continue and are seated in close proximity to the rest of you. The, the rest of the introductions for those sixth and seventh years might be a bit blurry, as let's say that next to Integrity Idleberry, 
and Mira Marchand, a woman sits down between the two of you, wearing a cool pantsuit oh, next to the two of you at the table, taking her position. You see on that plate a little label saying Joan Evelyn Kingsley. And no. she sits down gently <laughs> and will give you both a nice big smile. Hi, Joan. Oh, it's so nice to finally meet you, Mira. And she'll lean over Delness to almost shake your hand. I will shake it, but I will shake it with like, I'm, I'm using my left hand to shake it because mm. it has more force. And I'm like, <laughs> of course, it's a fucking tough grip that I shake Make an intimidation with. check. Yeah, I would love to yes. make an intimidation check. Oh boy. Uh, where is, there's Nathan's die, which is mine now. Ah! <laughs> um, so that's going to be a 24, because that is an 18 plus 6. Damn. Intimidation is the only charisma skill I'm not pro- proficient <laughs> in, but don't need it. Nice. I still have okay. a plus 6. Perfect. Uh, the grip tightens. Both of your grips tighten on one another. Joan's eyes uh, narrow a bit more, and her smile does not fade. She'll look over at Delnas, who she's almost leaned over and say, I like your new girlfriend, Uh, and then retract her hand a little bit uh, and lean to the other side and look at you, Integrity Idleberry, and say, nice to meet you. I'll be sitting next to you and beating you later in the duel tonight. I'm Joan. And she gives you a dashing (laughs) smile, Integrity. (laughs) Nice to meet you, Joan. Where do you get your outfit? She crosses one leg over the other and leans in closer towards you. Her face is not so far away now, and she'll go, A friend of mine made it for me. Why? Is it nice? Do you like it? Um, I think I should have chosen something else. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> we could go back to my room after, and we could look through my closet together, and you could pick out something nicer for me. And she winks at you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I have something. I have something. <laughs> mm, I have cooler people to hang out with later. Make a persuasion check. Shit. Or a deception <laughs> check, actually. <laughs> hey, we're cool. <laughs> but cooler than Joan? You want deception or persuasion? What is true to you, Integrity Idleberry? Is this just I have no is this trying to make her feel bad? Yes. <clears throat> then deception, please. Or intimidation, rather, if it's more of an intimidating affair. Your choice, really. Just tell me what you're rolling. I got, uh, well, either deception or the other thing that you said, intimidation, <laughs> is both plus two. Um, and I got 14. 14 plus two. Mm. 16. Mm. She winks and says, I'm sure you can find time for me, though. And back over at the Mira side of Joan, Delnus turns to you and goes, I hate this. I hate every fucking moment about this. This sucks so fucking bad. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's okay. We are going to have, like, the coolest time, and I'm going to beat her in the duel so bad. It's going to be so embarrassing for her. I'm going to do it for you, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I love you. I love you, too. Aww. And you guys hold hands for a second as Joan continues to flirt with integrity, Idleberry. The music continues, and Crow stands to do his weird introductory speeches, as is so common in the Crow era of headmastering. But we'll hear that next time on Trials and Trebuchets, because that's where we'll end this episode. (laughs) Carla, can you give me an outro? Ah! Thank you, everyone, for listening (laughs) to that flirty episode. (laughs) (laughs) Hope that you all enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, I think you really should leave a review on our iTunes or a rating, whichever one. And please be nice. Because, <laughs> okay, both, because we really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. It does. And if you don't want to comment because you don't want to put yourself out there, please spread us to your friends. Let them know that we exist. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> we also have an Instagram and Twitter at Trials and Trebs where you can follow us and see a bunch of teasers or art, whichever yes. you fancy. Um, we also have a Discord server that you can join. There's a bunch of cool people there, and you can talk to them or mm-hmm. talk to us if yes. we're on there. Um, but it's a pretty cool environment to talk about this super rad podcast. It's fucking tubular, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and OMG. Do you know that we have merch? We do. Yo, yeah. we have merch. We have we merch. Have merch. Oh. We have stickers. Yeah. We have shirts. Oh, my gosh. That's Just it. Just those two things. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good. You can find that at trebmerch.com. Or trialsandtrebuchets.com. Or oh, one of the two. Yeah. Use the better URL, though. 
trebmerch.com. Uh, trebmerch.com. And then we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash and Trebs, if you want to support us month after month. Anyways, uh, thanks for oh, tuning in that. to this week's episode of Trials and mm-hmm. Trebuchets. Tune in next week for some more stuff like this. If you liked this, you'll like the next one. Bye until then. Bye. <laughs> Sayonara, everybody. Bye.